Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Tim. I'm so glad that we get to worship together here at our online campus today. If it's your first time here, I sure hope it's not your last. We are one church that gathers both on-site and online. So when we became aware of environmental safety concerns at our on-site location earlier this week, it was a fairly easy decision to gather for worship together as one church online today. This is week two of our series, Is It Well? We're going to sing, we're going to pray, we're going to share communion, and then spend time in God's Word before we are sent to love God, love people, and live like Jesus right where we are. So welcome. I'm so glad we're here, and now Nora is going to share with us what's happening in OSLC Life. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. My name is Nora Gass, and I am the Director of Operations here at Our Savior Lutheran Church. I want to welcome those who are here that are joining us online. I want to invite everyone to complete a connection card by going to go.oslc.com cc. And if this is your first time worshiping with us today, let us know on your connection card. Here's what's happening in OSLC life. November is almost here and it's time once again for our Thanksgiving food drive that benefits Backpacks for Kids. This year, we are collecting cans of Nally's Original Chili Cone Carne with beans for the food bags which feed over 300 children each week and is fully dependent upon volunteers, gifts, and donations from people just like you. So make a difference in a child's life and be a part of the Thanksgiving food drive which runs from November 1st to the 24th. Donations can be dropped off at church or bring your donations to the Thanksgiving Eve worship service on November 24th. You are invited to our 8th annual November Fest. It's our Backpacks for Kids fundraiser. Join us online this Thursday, November 4th at 6.30, oslc.com slash novemberfest. We'll see you there. As we get ready to enter into our time of worship, I want to let you know that if you want more information on all the other exciting ministries happening at Our Savior, check out our central hub at oslc.com or download the OSLC app at oslc.com slash app. All right, let's stand wherever we are as we come into God's presence and begin our time of worship. It is only because of the steadfast love of our Lord that we could even have the possibility of eternity with Him. And He finds us where we are. He picks us up, gathers us to Himself, and He says, my child, I love you. So let's celebrate this incredible love of our God. Let's sing this together. Remember every breath. 
Because if you love, our hearts are clean, and we lift you up with songs of freedom, forever we change, because of your love. Indeed, the Bible says that we love because God first loved us. And because God loves us, even when we don't feel it, we believe and trust that we are forgiven, we are set free, we are loved, valued, and affirmed to live more like Jesus every day. And that's our shared story as we remember and celebrate communion today. It's through this family meal that we remember that we are fully forgiven. We have Jesus' spirit to live a life of value and freedom like he did. And we have the promise of life forever with Jesus after this life on earth. So as we gather around simple bread and wine, let's prepare our hearts to receive Jesus' meal today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and for the love that you have demonstrated for us through your life, your death on the cross and your resurrection on Easter morning. And as we prepare to receive this meal of bread and wine that you give to us, may we remember that that was for us, that you have died for our sins, that you lift us up to new life, that you give us your Holy Spirit to live in us, to live like you more every day. And right now we just admit that there are times when we haven't lived like you in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. And we ask that you would please forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your ways and walk in those ways to your glory and the love of all those around us. In Jesus' name, we ask this. And right now, we just pause to reflect on that prayer and bring to you, just personally and silently, anything that might be on our hearts or minds here today. You know, the good news is that you are forgiven, not because of anything I have said, not because of anything that you have said or even believe, but you are forgiven through the person and work of Jesus alone. So know this, you are loved, you are freed from your sin, both now and forever, and you have peace with God. You are back into communion, connected with God in this moment. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this is truth that we rest with, that we embrace today by faith in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. If you have your elements with you, we take our bread. And Jesus, the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body that's given for you. So do this in remembrance of me. Together, we take and eat the body of Christ. Then we take our cups. Jesus, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples saying, drink of it all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. So do this every time you do it in remembrance of me. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Kids, those of you who are not receiving communion as well, may the Holy Spirit continue to grow your faith and life in every way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now the body and blood of your Savior Jesus, his promises guard your heart, your mind, your soul, your faith, your life, all things until life everlasting. Go in his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. i
Let's share these words about who God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are in our lives. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey boys and girls, I'm Trevor, the kids and youth intern here at Our Savior, and I hope you're ready for this week's children's message. It was really fun to see so many of you in your awesome costumes at yesterday's fall carnival. You guys have really inspired me greatly. You all gave me some great ideas for some costumes I made. Let's see if you can guess them. Well, howdy. Y'all know me? Yep. Y'all got it. Y'all call me Fama Bob. No, I'm not a farmer, but I am a Nebraska corn husker. You know, a player on the greatest college football team of all time. Um, what? Despite the record this year, each loss has only been within a score, meaning that the potential to be seeded is totally available. <laughs> now we are out of Nebraska and in Germany. You may have guessed it. I'm Martin Luther. 
Are you guys ready? Because it is story time about a man who's known for the 95 Reese's. What? Uh, Pieces? Well, what am I supposed to do with all of these? Num num, num num, num num. Martin Luther was a logical ad and a smart speaker. He even got a movie made after him. And I will not recant. Because Luther was so smart and so good at speaking, his dad wanted him to become a lawyer, which would bring in the big bucks. But after being caught in a massive storm, Luther prayed to God and said, if you save me, I will give my life back to you and become a monk, which means he would have had to shave his head. Just kidding. And what a great thing that was, because it wasn't long for Luther to see that the Catholic Church had some things that needed to be fixed, like people shouldn't have to spend money to have their sins forgiven, and the power to make decisions in the church shouldn't be on the Pope, but the people inside the church, like you and me. So he wrote up 95 reasons why the Catholic Church had its systems in a whack and nailed them onto the church doors. Luther used his gift of wisdom to see what mess-ups the church was having, and used his gift of speaking to let the people know that the church had a problem. He wrote the 95 Theses trying to help the church, not tear it down. Luther was a great example of someone who used his gifts that God gave him. And I wonder what ways we can make a difference with our gifts. Parents, talk to your kids about what awesome gifts that they have and brainstorm ways that they could use their gifts. It could be something big like Luther, but it can also be something small like loving your friend in a way that only you can do. And that is our bottom line for today. We can use our gifts to make a greater difference. Let's pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for today and all you've done. Thank you for our friends, our families, and our gifts. Thank you for your son, Jesus. And in his name we pray. Amen. That wraps up our children's message about the Reformation. For more Bible fun, videos about today's lessons, and conversation starters for your family, head to the section called Sunday School at Home in today's Kids News email. Have a happy Halloween, everybody. I wonder if there's any of those 95 Reese's left. Hey friends, grab a Bible. We are going to Romans chapter 5 today. This is week 2 of our series, Is It Well?, where we're talking about spiritual wellness. On the surface, that title, Is It Well?, it might sound very much like, oh my goodness, is this uh, a mental health series? No, it's not. But we do believe that mental wellness, emotional wellness, physical wellness, um, relational wellness, financial wellness, all aspects of our life, God has, has put it all together and it all intersects in our soul. So we're talking about soul wellness, spiritual wellness here today. And we believe that this passage here in Romans chapter 5 speaks to what soul wellness is. All right. So uh, last week we defined spiritual wellness or soul wellness as this, as receiving and giving grace, that it's at peace, that has hope, that it loves and respects others, and it demonstrates a humble trust in the goodness of God. Not the goodness of man, but the goodness of God. And so uh, the soul wellness, the spiritual wellness, is really a state of being more so than a state of doing. And so with that definition in mind, let's go to God's word, hear what God's word has to say about our souls and the wellness of our spirituality. All right. Romans chapter 5, I'm going to begin in verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we also have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Why? Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Verse 6, while we were still weak, 
at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps a good person one would even dare to die. But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if we were in, while we were enemies, rather, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. May it guide our path. May it uh, lighten our souls, our lives, and may it renew our thinking, um, our feelings, the way we live in every way. So Holy Spirit, come in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, last week we, we ended with this understanding that spiritual wellness receives and gives grace, not the grace of man, not the grace of the world, but, but God's grace, which is different than all that. And this grace, it gives us choices, uh, choices physically, uh, mentally, emotionally, financially, uh, in all of life. And, and to, to say that, that, wow, I and of myself, apart from the grace of God, has a choice. You know, we will always choose. We will always choose in a way, maybe not to clinically self-medicate, but to always run to something else. Uh, maybe another another drink or another person or another activity. And, and we're always going, 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 trying to ignore reality or at least deny that it exists. Uh, our culture would just say, hey, you know, try a little harder. And, and if if you need to find the freedom, find it inside of yourself. And and so it's this sort of rugged individualism that our culture really propagates as wellness. And, you know, you're well if you just achieve a little bit more. But Jesus says, no, soul wellness, spiritual wellness, it's about me. It's about dealing with reality together, the reality of, of sin together, the reality of pain and brokenness and anxiety and and things are not the way they ought, but Jesus, his grace, it's like a hand, right? Comes and joins ours and he says, we're gonna do this together. It's just the next step, we're gonna do it together and every step of the way, we're doing this together. Jesus says, let's deal with it together. And he does. First on the cross, then through the empty grave, and now in your life in real time. And that's grace. That's God's grace given to us in real time. Today, we want to want to look at what spiritual wellness or being looks like when it comes to peace, being at peace. So we have to ask this question, what is peace? Well, if you do a Google search, you'll find that, that peace can be defined as this, freedom from disturbance, a state or period in which there is no war, silence, or absence. Oftentimes, when we think of peace, we think of conflicts, um, conflicts, means that there is no peace, right? It's either peace or war. And on a massive global scale, that's that's kind of how our world is right now. Let's just be honest. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of uncertainty. Certainly, we could say that the world is not at peace. But let's bring it down to another, another level. Uh, our individual lives, uh, our individual communities, uh, the way we live, the way we work, the way we play. Are we at peace? Uh, is there an absence of of conflict? Uh, is there so much noise that that we just feel overwhelmed all the time? Maybe that noise is through social media. Maybe it's through the media. Uh, maybe it's just other voices you're listening to, uh, books or tapes. Do we listen to the tapes anymore? Uh, podcasts, <laughs> the internet, and, and they aren't necessarily bad. Let Let's just be honest. They aren't bad are we free from them? Are we at peace in the midst of them? I'll, I'll be honest, over the last couple couple years here, the last two years specifically, uh, there's been a lot of unrest. Not so much over only the events that have happened, but oh my goodness, uh, the voices, the opinions. Uh, and, and it's kind of like um, um, the world has become people's personal diaries and and while that that's great expression and and there we value this freedom of speech at the same time 
at the same time, we have to admit that it probably has not led to a more peaceful life. At least not for me. Maybe, maybe the same as for you. But when we say that that what that is what peace is, we have to call a time out and say, okay, that's what the world's definition of peace is. The absence or the freedom from war and silence, conflict. But what does the Bible say? What the how does the Bible define peace? Well, the Bible is more than just the absence of conflict. The Bible actually talks about how it's taking action to restore a broken situation or a broken relationship. The Greek word here is irene, all right? Irene. And it's this peace that Paul talks about here in this section of scripture, that, that it's a peace, that we have peace, that the brokenness, the broken situation has, has in a sense been, been restored by his action, not our action, but his action. That it's more of a state of inner tranquility or a state of wholeness or completeness. That's the Old Testament's understanding of peace. It's shalom, all things coming together. And when you put shalom and arene together, that we see really the story of God is the definition of peace. The story of God being lived out in real time, in real life. That that everything of who the world is, that that even our own lives, there are broken areas, that there are places that are not at peace. My heart, there are places in my own personal heart that are not at peace. And yet it's through God and his work of Jesus Christ, dying on the cross, rising again. What Paul is emphasizing here is that's what brings us peace. Not just just freedom from the conflicts, not just just the freedom from from the wars, from, from silence, from absence, but but it's God's action that restores the brokenness. And that's what the Bible talks about as peace. In fact, it talks about it as a fruit or an outcome of God's spirit at work. So we can say that that person is at peace with God, with others, with themselves, because of their relationship with Jesus, because of their faith and trust in the work of Jesus Christ. I love what Martin Marty says and He's a Reformation scholar. It's interesting because uh, today, uh, m- most churches in the Protestant world, we are acknowledging and, and commemorating in a way uh, the Reformation, uh, what happened back in the 15, 14, 1500s, 15 uh, where, where the church it was very much not at peace. And, and there was this move to, to finding that peace in the, the rule of law, in nations, in governments, in people, uh, even in church leaders, uh, to the point where they were selling what they called indulgences for, for the peace from their sin, for forgiveness of sins. And this is what Martin Marty, a Reformation scholar, would say. He says this, In our day, we emphasize the gospel of self-esteem. Marketing the church based on people's needs, saying, I found it, and I'm the little engine that could. Our culture promotes human ability and human will, as did the indulgence culture in Luther's day, as a way to bring salvation. So I have a hunch Luther would still feel compelled to speak his central message, even today. Interesting. So how do we discover peace? Uh, It's a great question. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. First, uh, we discover that peace is a gift of wellness. It's a gift. Check out verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we talked about that last week. Check out that message. We have peace with God. Because of, of what Jesus has done, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a gift. It's given to us. We did nothing. God did it all through Jesus Christ. And what we see here is that we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Again, it's God's work in us. He has brought us near. We we, we have just received it. So peace, it's a gift. Just like grace is a gift, peace is also a gift. A little later on in Romans, it says this, God's gifts, we can say God's gift of peace here, and calling can't be taken back. In other words, God gives it and he doesn't ask anything in return. It's yours. It's like, it's like the best Christmas gift ever, kids, right? Right? It's yours. And you don't have to share it. You don't have, like, it's all yours. But you see, this is what, this is what peace does. We have so much peace that we can't help but share it. Martin Luther, he says this, that our Lord God has made his greatest gifts 
the most commonest. That's interesting because gift, if peace is a gift, wow, then it's common. Then, then peace works for the common good, regardless of how other people may have treated us or how we have treated other people. That peace is accessible, not through our actions alone, but first and foremost through what God has done in Jesus. I love what Martin Luther says about music and how music can even bring peace, how music is even a gift of that peace. He says this, the devil, the originator of sorrowful anxieties and restless troubles, flees before the sound of music almost as much as before the word of God. So not quite as much as God's word directly, but he says it's pretty close. He goes on, he says, music is a gift and grace of God, not as an invention of men. Interesting. Thus it drives out the devil and makes people cheerful. Then one forgets all wrath and purity and other devices. Some of us, we, we, we might find and experience peace through music. Um, and you know, while Martin Luther is not the scriptures, it's not the Bible, it's not, he's not an errant, uh, without error, um, I believe that he's speaking um, something that that really resonates, at least with me. Maybe it does with you, where where there's certain gifts that God has given us, specifically music, where we can experience a taste of peace that leads us back to the grace and work and power of Jesus that does bring us peace. So peace is a gift of wellness. Here, here's the second thing that, that we discover is that peace moves us beyond ourselves. All right, it's beyond ourselves. Um, this wholeness, this shalom, it is is sort of otherworldly. Like we we don't know what wholeness actually looks like apart from God. And and even at that, we get glimpses and tastes, but it's not until we are with him eternally in the life to come. Um, we would say in heaven where we actually experience the fullness of this peace. So it's here, but yet it's not here yet, which is why Paul says here in Romans chapter five, verse two, through him, we also have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And so in addition to this, we rejoice, we have joy in the hope of the glory of God. What is the hope of the glory of God? The hope of the glory of God is that we can experience God's peace today in part and in fullness in the life to come. I love what George Gillespie says here. Um, he says, Reformation ends not in contemplation, not just in, in wishful thinking, all right, but in action. The first action is that God has made his action toward us, that he's given us the, the promise of everlasting peace. He's our Prince of Peace. And when we experience that reformation in our hearts and our lives, that, that restoration of, of, gosh, God has given me peace. Even when I don't feel at peace, I know that I have forever peace and I can actually experience peace through the gifts of God here and now, but it doesn't end in just my own personal tranquility and peace, but rather it moves me to action. It moves me to action in, in the way I think, um, in, 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 in grasping on to responding, hey, I don't have anything to prove because God has already proved everything for me. He's proved that I am worthy. He's proved that I am loved. And how do I know that he's proved that? I look at the cross and he's not hanging there anymore. I'm not on that cross either, but rather we are alive and well hand in hand in this life. That's how I know that I have peace and that moves me to action. It's, it's how I can be wrong and, and, and that could just trap me in, in replaying that tape over and over and over and uh, the sin and the thoughts and, and the brokenness of how I might have broken relationships in my family and in the world. And, and, and I can own that wrongness. And at the same time, I can rise above that drama because I, by myself, while I was wrong in that situation, that that does not define the rest of my life. That I can boast in the hope of glory that first and foremost came to me, but then moves beyond myself because God has restored the wholeness of my soul now and forever. That I can be gracious and graceful, that, that it empowers me to empower others with the truth of God's word. 
I can give everything that I've been given away because it's a gift. It's a gift that's been given to me. And while I'm not told, you got to give it away. Otherwise, it's not a gift. I'm going to take it back. No, God doesn't say that. He gives us the gift of peace and says it is yours. But I have so much of it. It overflows that I can't help but to give it away, to give it more away, to give more away. That I can rest in the hope of the glory of God that, that is all mine. And when I think it's run out, there's even more to go. Yes, Jesus is present. And that is what it means to have the hope of glory and the boast. It, it means to go beyond, to, to give it away, to respond, not just in sitting and thinking and saying, I, I've got it. This is so good. But to give it away, to give it away, to give it away. And that's what peace does. It puts us at rest, the stillness, so we can give it away without the anxiety or the worry of, of somehow I'm going to run out. I'm not going to have enough. No, God has got a plenty of all things, including peace, which means we can give his peace away. That encouraging word uh, to rise above the drama, to be present with people. So here's the third thing. You can write it down. Peace restores our soul beyond this life. So forever and ever. Uh, check out verse 3 of Romans chapter 5. It says this, More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. We're going to stop there for today. The uh, suffering produces endurance. I mean, oh my goodness. How much do we try to endure conflict and brokenness on our own? And we try to eliminate suffering, right? But Jesus here, um, this, this is what he does. And Paul's pointing to this, that, that we actually have joy in the suffering because Jesus has gone through our suffering. We can have joy in endurance because Jesus has, en has endured all things. I love what the psalmist says in Psalm 23. He says that, that the Lord is my shepherd. I will lack nothing. He renews my soul. He renews my strength. He renews my peace, in other words. Over and over, his peace is new every day. And what does that peace do? Here, he guides me along the right paths. I can be a, a, at a place where, where I can see the path, where I, can, where I can have those choices. Like, I can continue down my path, but I want to continue down God's path. And I'm not anxious about maybe losing God or losing my way, but rather he guides me in peace. Because I'm at peace, he guides me in these right paths, bringing honor to his name. That's the outcome of peace. We bring honor to, to God and, and we bring love and, and connectedness and belonging to, to others around us, which, which is a way of giving peace, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So peace restores our soul. And to be well, is to be at peace, be, be at peace with God, at peace with others as we give that peace of God away through our words and our thoughts and our actions. Martin Luther says this, accordingly, a physician is our Lord God's mender of the body. But we as theologians, you can think of this as, as Christians, right? People who, who have a relationship with God. We are his healers of the spirits of the soul. We are to restore what the devil has damaged. Let's think about this just for a moment. We have been damaged by sin. We have been broken uh, in our thoughts, in our feelings, in, in our physical bodies, in our belonging, in, in our relationships with people, uh, in, in our purpose. Uh, we, we might be broken in somewhere in our purpose. Uh, we might be broken in our finances, in our stewardship, and how we use the things that God has given to us of what we've earned. But here's the thing. <laughs> We as people of faith have been healed. We as people of faith have been restored through Jesus Christ, that we have the peace that all things that were broken in Jesus have been made right and are continuing to be made right. And, and to admit that things aren't right and say, well, things are just all good. Well, no, they aren't. But only through Jesus they are. It's only through Jesus things are good. Because you see, this is what's happening. Jesus is at work in our lives today, restoring peace to our souls beyond this life. He knows that, that in, our, in our minds, in our thoughts, 
that that there's always a choice that that we can go down down his way or another way and he knows that if if we are not at peace that there is no way that we can choose to go in god's way but he restores our strength he restores our peace he is our peace so that so that we can walk in his ways in peace that goes emotionally that goes physically that goes relationally that goes for all areas of our life because you see it's soul wellness and our soul is the intersection of all of life i want you to, to do something with me here put your hands out like this and we have this gap and you can choose which hand is you and which hand is everything and everybody else all right um, i'm going to use my right hand here as me and this is everything and everyone else and now there's this gap and and truth be told, this is what happens. I try to work. I try to work to achieve it. I try to work to mend it. But you see, I'm always afraid I'm not either going to make it. And the truth is, it's so hard just to move one step by myself. Oh, my goodness. And even when, when it does seem like I'm close, it's like something pulls me away. Anybody else experience that? It, it just pulls me away. And it demoralizes my soul. It demoralizes my spirit. See, this is what Jesus does with this gap. Jesus, when he changes the things that I'm chasing, the things that allure me, the things that woo me, the things that interest me, the things that, that I think are important, but Jesus might not think are all that important. Here, here's, here's what happens. When this becomes Jesus and Jesus alone and what he has to offer, what he has to give, I discover I don't have to move toward it. Jesus has already moved toward me. That there's no more gap. That, that he has bonded himself to me through his life, his death on the cross, his resurrection. He sent his Holy Spirit. And, and I mean, Emmanuel, we, we thank God with us. It's only a Christmas word, but, but this is what Emmanuel is. Look at it. He's with us. He is our peace. I don't have to pursue peace. He already has given me peace. And when I am just with him, I can experience the peace that surpasses even all of my human understanding. You see, look at my hands. Look at your hands. It's fascinating. I hear all so often, man, prayer brings me closer to God. It's my peace. It's where I am. We're closest to God It's where I feel closest to God. Man, look at this. I can see why that's true. Can you? That God has brought his peace and it's in prayer where we experience that peace, that belonging, that safety. Because he has not said, come to me. No, he's already come to us. He's brought us peace now and forever. You know, there's a man in history named Horatio Spatford. Check out his story.
What an incredible story that God in the seemingly darkest place in Horatio's life said, I'm your peace. It's going to be well because I've come to you. You didn't have to come to me. I came to you. And that's what he does to you and me in our darkest places, in our lightest places, in all places of our life. He says, I've given you peace because I've sent Jesus to you so it can be well with your soul. Is it well? I pray that it is. So Heavenly Father, we give all of ourselves to you today, our body, our soul, and all things. Lord, may your holy angels be with us. May you protect us today from the evil one. May we experience your peace in all things. May, may those who in our lives that we love, that we know who need your peace, may they experience your peace in, in the healing power um, that you are able to do through the doctors and nurses who tend to their physical care, through therapists and counselors who tend to our mental care, to, to people who, who just tend to other people who bring your peace and wholeness in all areas of life. Lord, give them wisdom and restoration because you already are their peace. Thank you for birthdays and anniversaries for celebrating another year of your peace and goodness to us. No matter how difficult and challenging life is, may we rest and stand on your love and your peace here today. And God, for our world, we know our world is not at peace. And so we pray for nations. We pray for our country. We pray for those who lead that, that maybe supernaturally you would, you would show your peace, demonstrate your peace in some miraculous ways. And God, that you would use us, your church, ordinary people like us, to be demonstrators and bringers and instruments of your peace in our thoughts, words, and actions, not just today, but this week and for our entire lives. And so God, these prayers and all the other prayers we ask, we bring to you in the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, before we're sent to love God, love people, and live like Jesus with the blessing, uh, hey, check your emails. If you haven't already gotten it, Pastor Matt and I, we shared an announcement video about a service time shift, both for on-site and online services, starting November 28th. November 28th, that's a date to remember, November 28th, we're moving to two mid-morning services, 9 o'clock and 10.30. 9 o'clock and 10.30. Check out that email and video to learn more about why, how it's best for everything and everybody for this shift to happen. Kids Connect and Nursery will be at both services. There'll be treats on Sunday morning as well. So again, November 28th, 9 and 10.30. Check your emails if you have not gotten that announcement or that video. Let our office know, which means that you might not be getting uh, any other communications that we will be sending out. So uh, we want to keep you in the loop of what's going on here at OSLC Life. Um, because you belong here, right? So as we go to love God, love people, and live like Jesus here this week, go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with this love and favor and above all, give you his peace that surpasses all understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Love you guys. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Give
Say 